How you guys doing today? I'm Aaron Brown from the Garage Shop in Denver, North Carolina. Wanted to talk to you today about some things we got coming up here. One of them is our Roadsters, and I'll give you a little brief history on those. We built these cars last year completely from scratch. They're powered by Roush Yates FR9 Ford engines. They run in the C Street category at Bonneville and El Mirage. Uh, so we built these cars. We thought we had the greatest race car ever known to man. We go to Spaceport for the very first time right before Bonneville, and boy were we wrong. We had some handling issues. Uh, the cars had plenty of speed in them, but we just couldn't get them to stay on a racetrack. So that was the first problem we had to address. We kind of band-aided it a little bit for Bonneville, but we didn't get a chance to run. We came home from Bonneville, Two weeks later, after we cut the front clips off, completely redid the front suspension and the steering system, went to Blytheville, Arkansas with Steve Stroop from the uh, ECTA. He let us use the runway out there and boy did we hit on something good there. And now the cars, they started handling good. We had a fast race car. So we decided to go back and Vance Kirshner, we just took his roadster, drove his roadster, set a record at 204 in a mile and a quarter and we're still learning about these cars they're very complex suspension systems in the rear uh, they're a fifth and sixth coil uh, torque arm and bird cages and a four link just like a dirt late model car that that you'd see on a lucas oil series with a lot of help from penske uh, on their pull down rig we had some direction but we really didn't find our way until after we left arkansas the cars are handling good Still not a lot of speed in them, not as much as we'd like to see. We went to Pahrump, Nevada, uh, right before SEMA, and we set up a mile and a third course, and, and some people from the SCTA came out, set us up a legitimate course, and we spent three days testing in the dirt. What we learned in those three days about these cars was insurmountable. We, we learned just so much about the suspension, the aerodynamics, all, all kinds of things. So. We go to SEMA, they canceled El Mirage after SEMA, so we didn't get the chance to run the cars again. We still have some aerodynamic issues to address, and that's kind of what we're going to talk about today a little bit. One of the things we did, the 281 Roadster, is all set up just like we ran it at Perum, exactly the way it was, and we want to test that car in the wind tunnel, A, to back up what we did the last time this car was in, in the tunnel, which was previous to Bonneville, so we can kind of match that up, and we know what this car did at in Pahrump, and so we don't want to mess with this car too much, kind of want to use it as a validation process. Now, Vance's car uh, is totally different aero package than, than what we had before. Now, the rules on these cars are very, very tight. There's no air strikes, no underbody craziness, you can't widen the fenders or shorten them. The rules are very specific on what these cars are supposed to look like. We like to follow that, you know, within the best of our ability. So one of the things that we did is we were running 25 inch tires. We went down to a 23 inch tire, which effectively lowered the front of the car about an inch. Uh, one of the things that we identified with the dirt late model suspension, as the car goes down the racetrack, it actually the torque arm puts so much force into the rear tires, driving them into the ground, it picks the back of the car up about an inch and a half. It doesn't travel down like a normal car. There's room for some chassis improvement there uh, to get the car, to keep it more down. Because the higher the car is, the bigger it is, and the more drag it makes. But it makes awesome grip, but where's the wash point is what we gotta figure out between grip and speed. So one of the things that we did, we put smaller tires on the front. We also put 28 inch Goodyears in the back where we were running 30 inch tall Goodyears. And great tire, the 30 inch tires, really good. Lots of traction, both on the concrete, which I was really surprised. One of the two problems we have is we got an arrow issue and how much grip can we take away to keep the car more level, more lower to the ground without lifting the back of the car up an inch and a half. And we have that solution already figured out and we'll go over that in a future video. Right now with our new ride heights, the car is effectively two, two and a half inches lower than where we originally started last summer. So now we have to go back and redo all our aero maps 
and that arrow map is going to tell us okay we're lifting the back of the car up an inch and a half and it's making 400 counts of drag but at an inch it's 250. we need to figure out where that car arrow wise is happy so that's one of the things we're going to work on is our ride height map the other thing we're going to work on back here is, is when you look at the back of the cars we had our parachute mounted right in the center and you know and all that and had you know we have our other parachutes well we want to know what the optimum place for this parachute is because with the cage and, and the disturbance in the air right there with it being an open cockpit over here it's a little bit cleaner so why back up why back up the air coming off the car with a parachute so we built this little fixture here so we can slide the parachute back and forth and kind of up and down and we want to optimize where this parachute is going to go for the least amount of drag and we don't want it to affect our downforce which we'll get to that in a second the downforce in these cars is non-existent it, they actually make about 200 pounds of lift in the front and about 300 pounds of lift in the rear at 230 miles an hour so the parachutes one thing we're going to work on we're also going to work on the driver placement because we can raise and lower the seat a little bit. We're going to work on some stuff there. And then also we're going to work on some of our radiator, our duct work and getting air to the engine and keeping all that happy. We're going to put some pressure taps under the hood and we're going to check our under hood pressures. And if we have this sealed off too tight and there's a lot of air under there, if we can bleed it off somewhere, hopefully make a little downforce, that's great. But we got to be very careful. If we start making more downforce in the front, usually that's gonna cost you in the rear. And then there's another thing that I learned when I drove the Talladega and the Daytona at Bonneville. The Daytona went straight as an arrow. It was like a bullet. The Talladega kind of wiggled down through there and it kind of baffled me because basically the cars underneath were identical. Well, once I got home and started staring at these things, the quarter panels in the Talladega kind of go like this and the ones in the Daytona go like that. So I pulled up the wind tunnel information that we had for those cars well the daytona makes a lot of side force a lot of side force on both sides and that means the amount of air pressuring against the side of the car to keep it straight the talladega actually makes negative side force so that's probably why it kind of wiggled down through there like a slinky so we take that car back we're going to work on some side force stuff with that car it still drove really good. It was just a little unnerving because the back didn't really feel attached to the front, but we know what's wrong with it now and we can fix it later. Car still went 217. If anybody ever takes it, we'll go get it back. But until then, we're gonna let those cars sit, run them at Arkansas and stuff like that. We might even take them out and run them in the dirt, which I think would be a lot of fun. Back to this. So we're gonna work on some stuff there. We're also gonna work on some of the windshield. We got it's they're really nicely shaped but we got a little movement here and we're going to work on that in the wind tunnel and you know if we got to put a brace under there to kind of fix that little little bit there but when the wind gets on it i mean that can't be good for it so we're going to work on maybe putting a little brace in there and getting this kind of settled in and these are stock body cars you know the tubs and everything and the fenders and uh you know, we, we've worked totally around, you know, all the parameters that were given us. And uh, I think it's with these cars, it's going to be little details like that. You know, it's going to be some details on the, you know, some of the roll bar padding. Uh, you know, the placement of that, I, I think, is might be a little bit here and there. I don't think we're going to see big, huge, oh, wow gains. But I think what we'll see is a few little things that will help us have a, an ability to tune the car aerodynamically you know front to rear downforce lift with these cars actually but we'll have the ability to kind of tune that and, and i think the cars will drive better but for right now we'll go in the office and we'll pull up one of these wind tunnel sheets and i'll kind of go over some of this stuff so come on along we'll go on in here so now we're sitting in here and we're looking at the wind tunnel the wind tunnel numbers from the last time we're going over our test plans for this time and i'll kind of bring you up to speed of how we arrive at the decisions that we make so when we go back in here, one of the big things that I'm looking at for this is the baseline of the 281 Roadster. That's the car we started out with last time. It was a 431 in drag, two, 200 counts of lift in the front, uh, and 119 counts of lift in the rear. But we go over here, and, and this will more explain it in pounds, 
Now pounds of force at speed total it has this car has 409 pounds of lift. It has 165 pounds of lift in the front and 243 pounds of lift in the rear. One of the things we kind of went to identify and kind of see how sensitive the car is, one of the first thing we did is we covered up the whole grill shell with an aluminum panel and we, we taped that shut. And that really didn't change the drag much, but it went over here on the pounds of force. It did a big shift in the rear we went to 146 pounds from 165 pounds of lift. We went to 146 pounds of lift. So we made 20 more pounds of downforce. But again, we picked up lift in the rear at 269. It just moved it from the front to the rear. That's okay sometimes because sometimes you want to do a tunability and be able to move your dynamics aero loads around on the car for the big end of the track to kind of help its high-end stability but you'll sacrifice a little bit on the bottom we we tried a couple tricks to see if we were getting you know packing air under the hood and things like that we removed the grill cover uh raised the back of the hood up to see if it would bleed air that actually hurt it we did some testing with the uh, type of fasteners that we were using that the fasteners that we're usually actually help like a counter drag we even tested the helmet pieces at the end of the day when we came down here we ended up losing 10 counts of drag which was down we tuned it into 421 421 from a 431 and dragged the total lift went from 409 down to 377 and we were 143 233 and and then the la the labware baseline we kind of went through that and we had some different things set up we had wishbones we did some stuff to try we went outside the rule book to try to identify where the aero issues are and in my opinion these cars are just pigs <laughs> i'm just gonna say it they're they're horrible the biggest thing that we're gonna see here is 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 gonna be ride height you know is where the car actually rides on the big end of the racetrack and we did a ride height matrix on the number 88 labware roadster 461 drag so that 461 in drag, we dropped the back of the car a half inch. It went to a 448. We dropped it another half inch to a total of one inch. It went to a 444. And then we dropped it 1.5 inches and it went to a 439. So that's where we come, we circle back to the rear suspension, the torque arm, the fifth and sixth coil, and the bird cages and the four link actually lifting the car up because it's making so much torque and driving the tires into the ground with such force that it was picking the car up uh, you know an inch and a half so that's where we kind of miss miss the boat there the cars never really settled down with that type of suspension system so now we got to go back and redo all our aero maps you know we should be in the four low 400s high 390s in drag with the rules package there's really not a lot i don't see us ever getting these cars to make downforce so they we drove them with three four hundred pounds of lift out on the dirt they drove really good they weigh four thousand pounds so really when you have a four thousand pound vehicle that's also generating 600 pounds of force direct force through the tires into the racetrack these numbers are kind of they're small but i think i think we can get this if we can get these numbers down to oh i'd be pretty happy if we got down to about 200 and i think 200 pounds of lift and you know splitting it front and rear the, fr the front's probably going to make a little bit more than the rear but if we can sort that out through our ride height matrix I think we'll have some pretty comfortable cars and, and pretty slick. And I think that drag, if we can get around oh, in the 390s with it, I, th I, think we'll be, I think we'll be pretty good. The rules don't offer any more. You can't put any underbody panels on it. It can't, you know, you can't do a lot of the trick stuff that the modified roadsters can do. I look at that kind of as a safety issue. So you know when you get to the big end of the racetrack at 220, 30 miles an hour, that the car is going to be aerodynamically stable and, and safe. You don't want to, you know, spin out every third run because something's wrong. And, 
and if there if there is an arrow issue we'll be able to have our arrow maps and identify those things and, and fix them at the track without guessing so that's a look inside the wind tunnel test and next week we're going to be giving away those first two pit passes for a nascar race thanks to our good friends at safety clean they're really behind that they really appreciate you guys following us and if you like videos like this leave a comment if you have any questions leave a comment thanks for all you guys do for us thanks for following thanks for subscribing thanks a lot and we'll talk soon have a good day